Good morning, everyone. My name is Jens Freiman. I work for Red Hat. I heard there's a few of us here. I work in the virtualization team, and uh, most of my time I spend uh, working on DeepDK and Word.io topics, uh, more specifically Word.io Net. Today I want to talk about hardware accelerators for Word.io because they are becoming a thing now and they're becoming real and there's more interest in them. So today I want to talk about what was done for the Word.io specification and what has already happened in terms of implementation in the software stack and QMU and in KVM and so forth. So just very shortly, Word.io, it's the standard way to provide para virtualized drivers for, uh, for devices. Um, so basically, it's how you make your guest talk to your host. There's um, a Word.io core, it's word queues, and on top of that, there are, you can build devices for networking, for block, for anything you want, actually, for audio, input devices, whatever. Um, so just two terms I will use a lot during the presentation. Um, the driver is the part in the guest, and then there's an emulated device in the hypervisor. That's what I will, that's what I will uh, call a device. Um, but it was a, on a, an Oasis standard, so there's a specification for it. And um, I will talk about how the specification works and how you can participate as well. But first of all, so hardware acceleration. Um, why do you even want hardware acceleration for Word.io? Well, it seems these days people want hardware acceleration for everything. Um, but why would you not just use a pass-through device? Because that basically gives you all the performance uh, you, can, you would want. Um, but there's a few advantages that you could have if you had Vertigo capable hardware accelerators. Um, for once, um, live migration with pass through devices is, uh, or can be a pain. And it could be much easier if you had a Vertigo device actually in hardware and your guest doesn't know if it's talking to a software implemented device or a real hardware device. Then basically, the migration problem is you use the existing Vertigo. Um, framework for live migration. Um, obviously, you would likely have less latency and a higher throughput for um, in networking. Um, you could have better hardware isolation for your VAM, so you could share single queues or something of the hardware to a specific VM. Um, you could implement um, bandwidth limitations or um, things like this um, with hardware support so without actually spending CPU cycles on that. And by this, this implies uh, you free up cores and you get more cores to run your actual workload, your actual business logic. <coughs> so I said there's a specification for Word.io. It helps people who want to implement um, features in Word.io um, and to, want to implement new devices. Um, and the next version of Word.io specification will be 1.1. And it's currently under its final public review. So I think there's a bit less than 30 days left before 1.1 um, will be released. The focus for 1.1 was mostly performance optimizations, but also making it easier for hardware vendors to implement uh, the Vado ring, or to implement Vado in general in hardware. Um, so that's, yeah, lots of new features um, um, contributed by many different people from the community, lot, mostly um, other companies or vendors. The current, um, current status of the specification, um, you can download it here. Um, there's a PDF in that file. Uh, also the LaTeX source code if you would like to 
read that. Um, so yeah, you can get this here. So what do we do for the specification? What do we change? Um, one big topic was um, packed word queues. And packed word queues are a more simple uh, form of word queues. They are, um, their structure in memory is much simpler. So before we had um, two rings in memory and several fields that need to be updated, read, read and written. Um, now it's much more compact and dense. And that's friendly for hardware implementations because they only have to go to one location in memory most of the time. Um, ring size also change. Um, with packed word queues, it doesn't have to be a, a power of two. Packed word queues is like one big new chapter in the specification. And I talked about it in a lot more detail uh, last, year, last year's FOSDEM. So, um, the presentation is there on YouTube. If you're interested in how this works, uh, you can go and watch that. So another thing, ordering of memory accesses. Um, so software implemented devices and actually real hardware might have different uh, requirements there. So often a hardware implemented device will need more strict uh, memory ordering while a software device um, needs the memory bears that are suitable for uh, CPU requests. And so there's a feature bit added for that. And if that bit is present, it means that the driver has to use stronger memory barriers. This is also in the specification. Then we have, um, on some platforms, memory accesses can be restricted in some way. And could be that addresses are translated or not all memory can be accessed. Um, they could be behind an MMU, IOMMU, and um, that translates bus addresses to physical addresses. Um, there could be some special operations needed for the memory to be updated or cache flush or something. Um, so there's a new feature bit that basically indicates exactly that. And if this bit is present, it means that some platform code needs to kick in and handle this. Um, oh, if it, well, and if it's not present, it means the opposite, um, that the driver sees the same physical addresses that the device sees. Okay, there's a way to enable and disable notifications for both device and driver. And this is done by setting up a data structure in shared memory. And there's also a way to set um, a flag and a value that means only notify when this, this uh, specific descriptor has become used or uh, available. Um, why is this good for hardware? Well, it's a good thing in general, not only for hardware, but because um, you have to handle less notifications possibly. But in the case of hardware, it also means less transactions over the PCI bus. And similar, um, there's uh, a new enhancement to add more data to notifications. So before, we would only add the word queue number to notifications. So that the device now say in this word queue, there's something new. Um, but with this, you would add additional data. Like for packed word queues, you would um, at the offset and the descriptor ring and the uh, wrap counter, um, similar for split, split word queues. Um, so, yeah, it also saves some, could save some, some speculative reads for hardware. Let me talk about, um, so we talked about the spec, that's all in theory, it's on paper. Um, Let's talk about how this was um, implemented in software um, and the status of the implementations. So for packed word queues, um, there is full support in DPDK. So the vhost part is, was upstreamed with DPDK 18.11. And the uh, better pull mode driver will be in 19.02. 
Um, for QMU, patches are still under review, but in the final stages, I would say. Kernel value driver was accepted upstream. Um, the vhost part, not yet, but also hopefully soon. And um, so, yeah, and of course, packed word queues, as I said, they will be in the 101 spec. Um, but so, how do you integrate your new hardware card into QMU and KVM, and how do you make it work with the kernel and everything? So, and if possible, in a generic way that avoids a mess where every vendor um, does its own thing for his card. Um, Intel has been doing a lot of work here and came up with a framework for hardware accelerator cards. Um, it's called VDPA, and VDPA is short for VHost Data Pass Accelerator. Um, main goal here is basically to decouple um, data paths and control paths. Because you want the data paths, so DMA, notifications, queue interrupts, etc., to be really fast. Um, no queue may involve the possible, so the device will basically DMA into um, shared memory, and that this can be accessed by the virtual driver and the guest. Um, so basically what they did is, um, implement a new QMU net client called VFIO vhost, which sets up a VDPA mediated device. Um, yeah, and by this, so over this interface, you would run the control path, which can be slow um, because it just uh, sets the device up, sets the V-rings up, stuff like this. Um, what are the benefits of this? Um, you have a Consistent device interface for the guest OS. Um, you have more flexibility for hardware design. Um, the card doesn't even have to be a full PCI device. Um, and you can use the existing Verdeo live migration framework. So I mentioned vhost MDEF. Um, it's another new thing. Um, vhost MDEF is an MDEF-based vhost backend for hardware. So the idea is that you can set up this vhost backend in hardware um, like you set up a software-based backend. And you would um, use even vhost messages, so the form same format as is used for vhost IO controls or vhost user messages for this. Um, So MDEFs are a standard way to have emulated devices in a kernel. And so this em implements an MDEF device that can accept vhost messages and deliver it onto the accelerator drivers. Um, this device exposes a non-vendor specific uh, interface. So it has bars where you can basically write these vhost messages to and you would also use it another bar for a notification. Um, yeah, so this way you would achieve um, the separation of data and control paths. The status of this is actually um, it's only an RFC state, so it was proposed by Intel, um, but there's still discussions going on upstream about um, where to have vendor-specific drivers um, so Intel proposed to have them in the kernel. Um, there's other opinions that uh, say uh, we could also have small vendor-specific drivers even in QMU. Um, so this is still going on. Um, yeah, just stole this slide from a presentation from KVM forum from Intel um, to show, give, maybe gives a little bit better overview of how it would work. Basically get an MDEF, uh, create an MDEF and then pass it onto the QMU command line. And then um, you can see how you uh, basically skip uh, QMU for um, DMA and for notifications. And uh, you see that there's a, the gen more generic vhost MDEF driver and the parent driver, the MDEF parent is then um, the actual accelerator driver. 
Now, this is the actual hardware that uh, exists today. We talked a lot about hardware now, and there's one card that exists. And even that is, it was announced last year at OVSConf, and it's expected uh, that you can actually buy it in uh, this first quarter of 2019. Um, supports Verde Net hardware offload. Actually, it even does full uh, OVS acceleration. So it's FPGA-based. Um, there's tools to program it. Um, it's very advanced, actually. Um, <coughs> I mentioned uh, live migration here would work as I described before. Um, so this, uh, and, oh, and they even implemented not only Vada 1.1 goes back to 0 0.95. So you could even um, use old drivers, so old distros to run this. There's more detailed talks about this. Um, I won't go into more details here. Um, at OVSConf, there were two talks. The first one from Dan Daly is more high level, gives you a good overview. And the second one goes more into how, uh, what it all supports, how, what tools are available, and a bit how to use them. So, it's actually already my last slide. Um, what I wanted to convey is that we see increased interest from hardware vendors in implementing Verde on hardware and hardware accelerators. Um, there's a handful that I know of, um, but Intel is the first one that actually came out and announced something. That's the one device I talked about. Um, Intel also worked on the software side. They sent patches um, in DPDK, they are already accepted. Um, so in DPDK, there's no uh, vhost MDEV needle or anything. Um, so we have, in DPDK, we have support for VDPA, and they have an example, or they have a driver for their card already in there, and they have an example application that uses the driver that you can, uh, so an example that, you can, that makes use of the hardware card. Um, we have the Verdeo specification. Um, that's one thing to take away. New version coming out very soon. Um, still time to review. Um, if you work for a hardware vendor or you want to work on something like this, please take a look um, and actually participate in the community. Also, take, uh, there's a mailing list where everything is discussed. Um, there's a mailing list that you submit patches to, even to patches to the spec. Um, for example, you're working on a new feature and you want to make sure, um, so it will take you some more time to implement this, but the first thing you might do want to do is reserve a feature bit. Um, and that can be a one-line patch to the specification. Um, as a first step, later on we will want to see uh, actual implementation in QMU, um, but that doesn't have to be immediately. Um, first step could be very simple. Um, also, if you have, um, want to take part in our monthly virtual meeting, which takes place um, on the phone, um, that's only in addition to the mailing list, um, but where we can have uh, more person-to-person -person, um, discussions about topics, or if there are questions about something, we can do this there. Everything important, however, will be moved to the mailing list. So any discussion that needs to be um, on the mailing list because everybody needs to take part will be moved to the mailing list. And I think that's it from me. Are there any questions? Yes, Paolo. Sorry, can you speak up? Do you think that there are limitations on the large number of bits that you are reading at the given mix that will be able to upload? No, I don't think I said that. Oh, the question was, um, 
I mentioned that there's a number, uh, there's a limitation for the number of V-rings that can be offloaded, um, but I think that's a misunderstanding. Can you please go back? Uh, which slide? Here. Oh. Uh, here. <coughs> Oh, um, the, this uh, available instances. Well, that's um, the MDEV instances that are already um, somehow instantiated in your host system. So that will just have, but I don't know if there's a maximum number of MDEVs that's uh, like a bit outside of the scope. Um, I can find that out. Um, but this basically just has the number of available instances at the moment in the system. Um, can park offline. Any other questions? And thank you very much.